two, two focal points, two like vanishing points. Yeah. And this is great for a corner of a street. Okay, so what I would do for this is this is the corner of my building. Or a table. Now I'm just going to follow these lines all the way back to this point. And again, if I was learning it properly, there's a whole methodology behind measuring. But this is why we get people to sketch and look at the world around them so that you have the ability to be able to do this effectively. So with a streetscape, I want to do a whole series of buildings. So here's my first building. I'm just going to bring the line down here. There's building one. Then I want a bit of a gap between the buildings here. So I'm going to bring my horizontal line here. I'm going to have a horizontal line. I'm going to bring a line up to here. And on this pad where you put the hip started off. So here, that's your first building. No, the actual points. Here and here. <laughs> Either end of the horizon line. Okay. So your horizon line. Yep, so I'm creating a little alleyway here. And I can end it wherever I want. So I'm actually ending it a bit shorter than that building. So there's the corner of that building, so I'm going to take that back, make another building. Um, I might make the other building a lot higher here. So I'm actually going to take this one up higher. And I'm going to make it thinner. So these lines are horizontal. And you start to see you can build a street. I'm not doing anything complex here. You can do the same here. And then we got a, we might have here, we might actually decide to just do, I might even decide to do an avenue of trees on top here. So let's draw one tree in. I'll make the tree here. Once you've mapped it out, you can start to put all the detailing in. And it's again on the other side. So you can do whatever you want with these things. So I'm going to put that across there. That, see, these lines go back to there, see? So is everyone sort of understanding it and seeing the effect? Yes. Yeah. Enjoying it? I love doing perspectives. 
I used to hate it when I was having to do them technically. But when you start to learn how to do it just with your eye, it's quite fun. And you can add detailing on, obviously, like windows and So, you know, if I wanted to add a window in, it would be the same sort of concept. So I, mm. Well, I did a roof there, for example, but if I, you know, if I went in a little bit further, so you're taking your first bit, I can show you here. All right, let's go and create the side. <laughs> And if, because I'm looking lower here, you're not actually going to see much of the roof. Mm. So you wouldn't see a lot of the roof, but if you change where the viewpoint is, so if I went down more like that, and then I want to put the roof line, the top roof line, which is straight. Do you see what you do? Yeah. Okay, you see that? So you have to go in a bit harder when you go and see that. And then you can do things like you start to add in your shading, it starts to pop. So we're having the light source coming from there. And obviously this whole side of this face would be shaded in. light coming through there. You wouldn't really get much there. And if you're going to do windows and stuff like that, it's the same sort of thing. You can um, you have to just keep that line going back. Mm. Feedback. And wider here. And there's the gap and then it's not going to be the same as it goes in okay and I can just shade them in or whatever you want to do People are the same if you're drawing people, loads of people. You can people are different heights though, but you can add so much to these drawings. You can add in street signs, whatever you want, and start making it come to life. Textures. So that's a two-point perspective. So that's a street scene, but you can make the street in one point perspective. You can't make train tracks in two point perspective. You probably wouldn't do that. But uh, two point perspective is really good for furniture pieces or edges of buildings. Okay? Yeah. So that's two point. So the rules you've got to remember is you need to remember your vanishing point, your horizon line, and if it's two point, it goes to either side. And you've also got to remember that if you change, so say I made the horizon line higher, and if you make them closer together, for example, with your vanishing point, imagine that, you're going to get a really steep corner. If it's lower, and you're taking it back, that's how it would look. So that's your horizon line. So you can change the angle of your horizon line too. So that's looking down, looking up, and you can build these really amazing pictures just by understanding that. So can you see how that fits with composition? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Are there any questions? No. And again, we can get complex and we can start to go, but what if it's round? Sure. So something that's circular, I'm going to show you something else. If it is circular, for example, if I was to take that guideline back there for this, and then I was to take that guideline back for this, you've got this shape here, same at the bottom. 
and then take them to the corner. So I've got this shape here. See this shape here? I'm actually going to go in with a red pen. There's that square shape here. And I can just create an ellipse in here. Okay, so I've got my ellipse. And I bring that up. And I bring that up. And the ellipse is going to be the same above, but you see it be the opposite oh, way. Like drawing a cylinder. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. just drawing a cylinder. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see how bad that is. But that's how you put a cylinder in perspective. Okay, mm -hmm. and I don't think you need to worry about a sphere about right in perspective. But the, the main thing is if you had a whole load of these balls, just get them smaller into the distance. Yeah? Yeah. All right, well, that's it. That's the end of that presentation. <laughs> no, thank good. you for watching. Thank you. <laughs>